Hey, I'm Chris from Make Everything, and today we're going to add an LED light to this miter saw so that we get a shadow cut line. And we're going to do it for under $20. Check it out. This particular saw is the Bosch 12 inch axial glide miter saw. It's the GCM 12 SD. I love this saw. I love it so much I have two of these things. I have one that I keep at the shop and I have one that I bring with me on site. This is my site version. So this saw comes with no laser and no LED light from the factory. They offer a laser but it's one of those battery centrifugal ones that only is on when the blade's spinning. I can't stand those things. I think they're dangerous honestly. This modification takes a cheap LED sewing light from Amazon, costs less than $20, and gives the capability of having AC powered LED light that shines down, giving a kerf off the shadow of the blade, which goes directly onto your workpiece and is affected by the blade. So let's say you had a narrow kerf blade near, you're gonna get a narrow shadow. A wide kerf, you're gonna get a wide shadow. You don't get that with a laser. This is dead on accurate every single time for less than 20 bucks. It's a great modification. Follow along, see how I modify this light to work on this saw. This could totally work on other saws too. It's going to take a little bit of working around, but I really think it's worth it. Check it out. So this LED light is marketed towards a sewing machine, but it's basically just a little LED light with a converter inside that little round enclosure that makes it able to run off uh, AC current without having one of those wall warp things. So just pulling it apart you can see the little control board and the switch and we're basically just going to pull this out of the little enclosure that it's in and extend the wire that goes from the light to the control board and we have to extend it because if not the guard from the saw will hit it when you mount it to the top of the saw hood. So on this Bosch saw it's pretty easy to get the blade guard off and you have to do that to have access to the parts of the saw where you're going to mount the light. We're going to take off this little plastic guard thing they have up here and it almost looks like it's made to have a light put on it but like I said Bosch doesn't have any attachment for this. The concept of this type of light is pretty simple. The light shines down and as long as it's centered over the blade it gives an exact shadow for where the blade is so that when you go to make your cut you know exactly what material you're going to remove. So now that I know that it's lined up correctly we can go about extending that wire and modifying it so that it mounts nicely on the saw. And this is 22 gauge speaker wire. The wires that are coming out of the light that go into the control board are very small so you could you could use regular single wire but this was just what I had and it was convenient to use it. The first thing I did was just desolder the light from the control board. Um, this might seem intimidating if you don't know how to solder and don't know anything about you know circuit boards but it's really easy. Um, you could actually do everything that I'm doing with solder you could do with hot glue you just have to be a little bit more careful. Um, when you're done with this, it's going to be attached to the saw in such a way that it's not really going to be under any load, so hot glue should be fine. I'm just stripping back the wires that come out of the LED light so that I can solder them to the new wires. And you have to take special care as to which color wire goes to the positive and the negative side on the control board. So I had written it down on a little piece of paper knowing that you know the white went to the positive and the red went to the negative. And I'm just using some really fine electrical solder to keep these two together. Now that the waters, wires are soldered, I decided to just put heat shrink tape on each wire individually to keep them insulated from one another. And now that those two individual wires are heat shrink, I will take heat shrink tape and run it back over the two wires and make it one continuous 
line of wire instead of having two loose wires that you know might get loose and get hung up on something when I'm moving the saw around. Now that the heat shrinking is done, it's time to just reattach those wires to the control board. And again, I had taken note as to which wire went on which terminal. And I'm just removing any of the excess solder that might be shrouding the holes. Um, you could just pick at this with like a pin or uh, a little metal pick. But I have this desoldering um, braid stuff that pulls the solder out of the joint, which works really nice. And these wires are small enough to get through the holes. And I just twist them up a little bit make sure that I get every kind of every fray of the wire I want to get through the hole so I get a good point of contact. If you don't have one of these little hand clampy things, you got to get one. It makes soldering stuff so much easier. A little dab of solder on each one of those terminals and cut off the excess with a little wire cutter. Test to make sure it still works and we're all good to go. I'll put all this stuff back in the little plastic enclosure and just put the cap on it for now. Eventually I'll seal that back up permanently with hot glue. Tape the light up to the top and just make sure everything still works one more time. And on this particular saw I can modify that little black piece and put it back onto the saw with the new LED light in it so that it looks more finished. And I'm just taking a plastic cutoff wheel for the Dremel and cutting out the shape that will hold this little LED light housing. And it's sort of rough. I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go, you know, taking little bits of material off to get it tight. And Dremel's great for this because it just eats away at this plastic material. And I'll put two screws in the back of this because the front is running a little bit up but that'll be enough to hold it really firmly now it's just a matter of attaching that wire I'm gonna use hot glue over here I want something that's gonna kinda of look clean and it's replaceable it's easily repairable if it pops off on a job I can you know I always have a hot glue gun with me and I can always just put another dab of glue on there or figure out some other way to attach it maybe with some tape but I use tape on my other saw and it gets full of sawdust so hot glue is a nice option And I have good motion, I'm not getting bound up by anything, so I can put the blade guard back on. And since the base for this little light is magnetic, I can just pop it right onto that metal blade guard and then zip tie the wire in place, and it's good to go. I'm following the path of the original wire. Hypothetically, you could directly wire this into the power supply that goes to the saw, but I was worried about messing up the power to the motor. So I decided to just run it separately and just get one of these three-way splitters for everything. And here you can see the difference between not having the light on. You know, you can sort of see where the blade's going to go, but with the light on, you know exactly what material you're going to remove. And that's so helpful when you're doing, you know, finished carpentry or even if you're doing rough cutting, you know, it's just one less thing to have to think about. It makes your job run more efficiently, gets you work done faster, and at the end, it gives you a better product. So obviously, this is going to be different on any saw that you do it on, but on the Bosch saws, it's really straightforward. And that's it. So for under 20 bucks, you can get this light that'll give you a perfectly accurate cut line every time. I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And check us out on Instagram at Make Everything Shop. See you on the next one.